Madeleine Albright served as Secretary of State to President Bill Clinton. She's the chair of the Albright Stonebridge Group and is campaigning for the last nine days has been out across the country for Hillary Clinton and joins us now exclusively Madeleine Albright. Madeleine Secretary, thank you very much. Let's talk politics. Uh, we don't usually talk politics, you and I, off the top, but you've been campaigning, and one of the big issues in the last nine days, two weeks, has been, of course, the issue of women and how women are reacting to the allegations of sexual abuse and the denials, we should point out, and the fact that we have not been able to validate any of these allegations, but it certainly has been front and center. Um, what are you hearing? Are you only talking to Clinton supporters, or have you talked to any undecided voters? First of all, it's great to be with you, and I have been out. I've been in nine states in the last two weeks, and I have talked to a lot of people. Um, the energy level of the Clinton supporters is really remarkable, and people are ready to go out and multiply and get uh, a lot of door knocking and canvassing going on. I have talked to some undecideds. I think that what is interesting is there's no words that even describe the reaction of women to what... Trump has said. I mean, it goes from disgusting to unprintable to uh, really just so uh, appalled at the kinds of things that he says. And then to say that these women are all lying is just stunning. So he does live in a parallel universe. And I think that the women have had it. Uh, there's just no question. People are fed up with the kind of language uh, that he and and the allegations that he is making that absolutely don't make any sense. Lou, disgusting. I know when you were here in New Hampshire during the primaries, you found yourself coming up against a generational divide. Very frankly, some of the young women, women as those like here on this campus, were having difficulty connecting to Hillary Clinton. We have yet to be able to poll whether there is a change, frankly, in the last couple of weeks since the issue of sexual assault, which is so important on campuses and so important to younger women as they face the kind of harassment and face it with a, a different attitude than a lot of women in our generation, you know, dealt with it with. I, I don't know if you're beginning to pick up anything. You're the mother of daughters and uh, you talk to a lot of women, but I would suspect they are mostly women in Hillary Clinton's orbit. Well, it's interesting because there were a lot of young women uh, in the groups that I met with across these nine states, and the feeling that I really got is that they get it, that they don't want to live in a world where there is somebody that's running for president that can say the obnoxious things that Trump has said, and that they see that Hillary is the person that has stood up for women's rights, that has cares about equal pay for equal work, and doesn't put up with the kind of statements that Trump makes. And frankly, the dignity that she has dealing with the kinds of lewd comments that he has made. Uh, this was one of the things that he said this weekend. He was laying out what he said would be his first 100 days. And aside from that substantive message, this is the comment that got everyone's attention. Every woman lied when they came forward to hurt my campaign. Total fabrication. <laughs> the events never happened. Never. All of these liars will be sued after the election is over. So. You know, that's just one one of the comments that he made, but that was the, the one that got a lot of attention. It was a, near the Gettysburg battlefield, and clearly he's talking about going up against these women who have made accusations against him. Well, I think it is, again, stunning, especially the location, but also that he thought he was going to give a policy speech, and instead, all he's focused on is trying to defend himself from un indefensible points. Uh, and I think it's ridiculous. I think that uh, his uh, approach to all this is so outrageous that every time he speaks, he truly outrages more women. And I certainly got that feeling from what I've been doing for the last couple of weeks, that some women uh, who I think might have thought, okay, we can deal with this, are beginning to see that this is more than locker room talk and that we all have to stand together with men who also disagree with the kinds of things that Trump has been saying about women. Let's talk about WikiLeaks because uh, we know that these are stolen 
emails. They've been somehow distributed by WikiLeaks. Uh, the intelligence community is pretty much united that Russia, and at the very highest levels, is somehow behind the original hacks. That said, there are risks for Hillary Clinton in these last 15 days, just in the last couple of days. Uh, leaks that show that there were real concerns on her team about San Bernardino, about the fact that Malik, the, uh, the perpetrator there in San Bernardino, had gotten a visa, that there hadn't been tough enough restrictions by the State Department in this, uh, under her tenure. What about what we're learning about all of these campaign conversations, about her role, about foreign policy? back and forth, uh, it's, it's pretty raw stuff. Andrea, I don't think we can discount what you said at the beginning, which is that these are leaks that are being manipulated by the Russians. Uh, the intelligence community, 17 intelligence uh, members of the intelligence community, the groups are seeing that these are validating the fact that these are coming from Russia. Uh, and that, in fact, the Russians are trying to do something that has not been done before, which is to interfere in our electoral process. Uh, as you well know, I've spent a lot of my life looking at what goes on in the Soviet Union and Russia. This is stunning, and it is an interference in our uh, democratic affairs. And what has happened, uh, there's a great term that the Soviets used to use, somebody being a useful idiot. I think that Trump falls into that category of people that are manipulating also by the Russians and the Russians are trying to interfere in our democracy because they don't have one themselves. Uh, one of those emails that was leaked, uh, these stolen emails, uh, goes back to March 2015 after what all of us who were there and most of the commentators afterwards said was a really um, disastrous performance frankly, by Hillary Clinton when she was first confronted with the challenge of explaining the private server. She was at the United Nations Security Council. People questioned that venue. Near a Tandon, one of her supporters wrote to John Podesta afterwards, I don't know how the story advances, so that's good. And Podesta wrote back, they will go after the server, but that takes us back to Benghazi, which is good for us. So there was great relief at that point, a month before she was declaring her candidacy, that she had put this to rest. And in fact, the private server and her emails are shadowing her all the way to Election Day. Well, first of all, she has apologized and said she made a mistake, but I think you have to take into consideration where these leaks are coming from, how they are being used, the interference by a foreign government in our system, and the fact that Trump has kind of invited the Russians to get involved in this. And as somebody that is interested in national security policy, I feel really strongly that we have to focus on what is going on here. Uh, this is a national security issue in terms of the Russians uh, uh, being uh, really a part of what we treasure, which is our democratic process, and then Trump kind of falling into whether he's part of their plan or he just falls into traps, uh, kind of talking about elections being rigged and various parts about voter suppression. Uh, this is, I've never seen a mind meld of this kind between the Russian leadership and a candidate for May, the presidency of the United States. And I think that's what we have to think about, is what is going on here? And Trump was briefed in his intelligence briefings about what the Russians are doing. And he's playing their game instead of being concerned about America's democratic system. Uh, finally, do you think that Hillary Clinton has learned the lesson about the private server? And if she is elected, and if she is so fortunate, that she will be more transparent than she was when she was Secretary of State? Well, I think that Hillary Clinton is going to be a fantastic president who cares most of all about America's national security and how she will serve all the people and bring this country back together after this very divisive campaign where Trump has made us look at each other and not trust each other. And I think Hillary is somebody that I trust that can be trusted to have a transparent and a very pro-American uh, national security policy as well as a domestic policy. I cannot wait for Hillary Clinton to become president, and I'm going to do everything I can not to take anything for granted in this next two weeks. Madeleine Albright, thank you very much. Uh, and as you were speaking, we were also watching 
moments ago, Hillary Clinton arriving in Manchester, New Hampshire. She's about 10 minutes out from this rally here at St. Anselm's. Thank you, Madeleine Albright. Good luck there on the campaign trail. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.